Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be building upon further upon the XP component by creating a widget that communicates the information and displays it for the player. Now, to do this, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to have the ability to have widgets. So we will make some organizational uh, measures for that. We will create a folder. We will call this one widgets. In that folder, we will go in and create a user interface widget blueprint. We'll call this w underscore hub. This will represent our main widget, which we put other things into. In our third person character, we will go to our begin play. Uh, we don't have one right now, so we'll just right click and type in begin play. <clears throat> From here, we will type in uh, create widgets, like so. And the widget class we want to use is w underscore hud, like so. Once the hud widget is created, we want to add it to our viewport, so let's do that. So now, when we start playing, we should be getting our HUD. Of course, we don't have any elements in it currently. So let's work on that then. We'll create a widget for our XP. So another widget, W underscore, let's just call it XP. And we open that up. We're going to keep this very simple uh, because uh, stylizing it is uh, secondary. First is having the functionality and having everything done. And then all the separate modular parts can be like polished and created and made pretty uh, later on essentially. And that's usually how I would suggest that you make a game because um, you may, spending, may end up spending time on things that you might not actually be keeping in the end. So having the functionality working properly is uh, probably key when it comes to game development, I would say. In this case, we will be doing it really, really simple. So first of all, we'll change from fill screen to desired on screen. So it can be whatever the HUD decides it to be. And we'll remove canvas panel because we don't want that. We just want to have a very simple text and add it here. And this will represent whatever XP that we have. So we will give it a name. We'll call it experience amount. We'll create it as a variable so that we can actually access it. And as a default value, we can put a zero here to see what it would look like. So this is essentially the start of our widget. Now, the next part is going into the actual uh, graph of the widget. We'll get rid of event tick because we never want to use tick. And we can actually remove the pre-construct as well. So on the construct here, what we essentially want to do is we want to set up the functionality so that Whenever the experience points are changed, we want this widget to get notified because we don't want to use bindings. Bindings are really bad. Bindings keep updating things every frame regardless of you need it, if you need it or not. And that's just bad in general. So we want this to be event driven. We want to say whenever experience points are changed, that's a good time to do an update. However, we don't have an ability to update this currently because our experience points blueprint component doesn't actually do any communication in this manner yet. So we'll compile and save so we can leave this widget for now and we'll go back to our blueprint component for XP. Now, a good way to handle uh, communication when it comes to widgets, in my opinion, is again, event dispatchers. Those are really good for this kind of type of communication when there's a broadcasting being done and only those interested in listening to it gets informed about it. So we want to have an event dispatcher and we want to say, call it uh, XP changed. And again, like we talked about the event dispatchers in an earlier episode, we may want to change what is actually going to be contained in this um, event dispatcher. And it might be good for that reason to create a structure for this. So let's go to our folder for XP and create a structure. And we'll call this structure 
s underscore xp context. And we'll open that one up. Starting out, we're going to keep this very simple. You may change this later on, of course, but we'll just make a float and say that this is our current XP. That is all that we want to communicate in this current state. So we'll save that, close this down. And in our Blueprint component now, we can say we want to communicate this when whenever XP is changed. So we add to the signature of the event dispatcher that we want to send S uh, XP context. And we can call this XP context to be consistent like so. So whenever we have been awarded XP, that is when we have had an XP change, right? So it makes sense to call this event here, this event dispatcher. We do need to create this XP content though, so we'll make it. And what we, will, what we need to send in here is our current XP. And we have actually calculated this already, so that's what we will make use of. Compiling like so, we now have an event dispatcher which we can use to communicate with. Going back to our blueprint for our widget, we can now say that we want to reach for this. So since we are interested in our own XP, what we will do is we'll get owning player pawn, like so, which means that we will get the, the pawn for this uh, widget, its pawn we're gonna get a <laughs> handle for, and we want to check if that one has an XP component. So we'll get class, compo get component by class, sorry. We'll make sure that it is of the XP type. And if this is valid, we could now bind it. Essentially, if this is if this is invalid, we could still bind it because nothing would happen then. So I think that's fine to do as well. So we'll type in bind event. And then you can see here we get our bind event to XP changed. So this is the event we're interested in listening for. We'll get an event over here. We'll create an event, add custom event. We'll call this XP changed or something. We will now have the signature of the context here, which we can immediately break to get the components inside of it. We get our float value, which is good, and we can now make this to print out. So we'll get our little widget uh, text here. We'll set text. So the one down here, set text text. And we'll hook it up like so, and then the float to the text and it converts it for us like so. So now essentially when we have our experience changed, this one will get notified, it will update the text for us. Let's go to our widgets and our HUD, and we open up the list called user created. It should now have our WXP uh, component in it. We can just drag this out and put it somewhere in the middle, doesn't really matter, it's just for debugging test purposes right now. So we'll do this, we see we have a zero there and pressing the five key, you can see that it updates with the experience that we are having. So that functionality works now and is easy to clean up and make prettier or made into a progress bar or whatever you want to at this point. But getting notified about just experience points is usually not enough. We also want to know whenever we're leveling up because multiple parts of your system might be depending on knowing that information. So we can actually build upon this a little bit further and create some functionality for that. Uh, what we can do is we can start off by going to our context and adding something to it. So we'll add a integer value saying that this is our current level, like so. Saving it and closing it, we can go back to our Blueprint component uh, for XP. We'll compile it and save. We'll go back to our widget. It should be needing compiling and saving. You should not be getting any errors if you compiled and saved in this order, I believe. And now we can actually add our event dispatcher for uh, our leveling up. We can say that we want to have the same signature as the XP changed, for example. Uh, so we can do what we did before. We can make a bind and we can create another event. We can call this one signature. 
just so we get the same signature and naming convention. Um, or we could just make use of this as well. But this is explicitly saying that we're notifying about the XP change. And now we actually want to tell just that our level has changed. So creating another event dispatcher now, we can call this level up. And we can say we want to tell the signature of signature, which is what we created down here. Compile and save. We will now have it named and looking exactly the same as the other one. Where we want to level up or communicate that we've leveled up is going to be in the try to level up and it's going to be in this part of the branch. So we'll do this, we'll call this level up over here, like so, like that. Now we have um, the, the, the event dispatcher has now been called with the information that we need, but we haven't created the structure that it's sending, so we'll get it like so. And in this case, we want to send current level because that's what's important. We could also send our uh, current XP in case that is something that uh, whoever is listening to this wanted to know as well, for example. And now essentially we have completed that functionality as well. We don't actually have anything that does anything with this. Uh, we could add another widget that had uh, just XP. Actually, let's let's do that really quickly or we have a canvas panel here we can actually just no this is the hub never mind we have our xp here let's right click on the experience mount and say wrap with and say overlay this will allow us to have multiple um, things in this uh, multiple widget objects so we'll create another text into the overlay we'll call this one uh, current level We'll make it into a variable and we'll put a default value of one into it and then we'll put it somewhere else. Let's see. All right, we can't place it however we want to because, okay. Uh, so this is gonna be a little bit messy, but and I probably can't, no. So let's do a quick little, um, wrap with mm -mm -mm. let's put a vertical box so this is not going to be the prettiest thing ever but it should give us the functionality and the clarity of what we're going to be doing so the first one will be our xp the second one will be our level uh, like so and the same thing can be done here now we can say uh, bind event on level up and whenever we level up, we then make use of this event over here. So we'll add the event like so, leveled up, and we'll say that we want to get the current level set text, and set the text to be the value that is in the structure that is called current level. Like so. So now we'll get informed as well with, um, with that. So playing now, we should see that we have uh, both of these values, pressing five. You can see that we got 1000 experience points and we jumped up to level four immediately. We keep adding experience points until we get 5,000 and we have our fifth level. So now we have some very basic debug, making sure that both of those things work. And this is this uh, level up event is something that might not just be interesting for the uh, inventory system. It might be important for other parts of the system as well uh, in the framework as we go along. Uh, this is just to show how you can like add all of the functionality that is related to an XP system like this. I think that's a good point to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.